I did play and finish Metroid Dread on the combination of my OG Switch and my Switch Lite. <laughs> Damn. O- OG Damn. Switch so- to, to secure the good game footage, which uh, video watchers you should be seeing pretty soon when my computer decides to do its thing. There you go. Look at this. This 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 game is just something. Mm. It's, it's beautiful. Pretty. Um, but yeah, I played, I played and finished Metroid Dread. It took me... The, my in-game time says seven and a half hours, but I've since learned that the time pauses when you are looking at the map. Um, oh, okay. And I don't know if it takes into account um, every time you like, fight a boss again or die. Um, so I, I would say, I'm going to guess I played, it took me like eight to nine hours. And at your, your drive time will differ based on how, mm, mm. you know, how, how, how much do you want to complete the game? Because obviously there's a lot of little holes and nooks and crannies with, Power ups and extra extra things you can go collect. Um, but I yeah. mean, you were saying you only had around thirty percent item. Yeah, completion. it was thirty thirty to thirty five percent item completion. That is more because I just wanted to see this game out, and I will be revisiting it um, in the near future. Because spoiler, I really enjoyed Metroid Dread. Um, shocker! I mean, Matthew loves shocker! A, a Metroidvania. For for the, yeah, for those of you who don't know, I mean, you've you've obviously heard us talk about the Metroidvania genre, and that obviously. Metroid is one half of that with the original Metroid on the uh, NES way back in, I don't know, did it come out? must have been in the 80s, like mid-80s, late uh, 80s. I can check for you quickly the first um, Metroid. But I mean, that NES. was, uh, I could be wrong, that was uh, uh, to my knowledge. 1986. Which, yeah, the the first game that did the whole, you know, you you can technically get around the whole map, but you can't actually because you need to get abilities to, you know, either reach new areas, unlock doors, that sort of thing. Um, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it's got the foundation. It was the foundation of that formula. And I think Metroid, you know, had a, it, like Metroid's an iconic franchise, but it's kind of been absent the last decade or two. Um, like I could be wrong, but I don't think there's been any standout Metroid games besides maybe... You know, I think the Metroid 2 remake was well received on the 3DS. On 3DS, yeah. Um, but this game, Metroid Red, is actually a sequel to Metroid Fusion, which came out in 2002, I think. It was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, around about then. This is like Super essentially Metroid 5 in yeah. the classic lineage. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, this this is a, a game that is long overdue, but I don't know. The, the studio who did this, they ticked all the boxes and they've put together a phenomenal metroid title with all all the signature things you'd expect you know the big mm-hmm. sprawling levels lots of collectibles to get and just i don't know it's it's got that that metroid flavor of you just got your little pew pew cannon which over time you slowly upgrade you get abilities you got the good morph ball ability um, which you obviously just use to dig deeper into this alien planet that you are exploring um and man, look at that armor. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, it looks real good. It's Yeah, but uh, I mean, some things that make this game just really stand out to me is that normally, I mean, th- this particular point could be hit or miss for some people. Um, but normally when you play a Metroidvania, you might, you know, you get a new ability, say, if I want to thumb suck an average, like every hour, an hour and a half. And then you use that to, you know, go back, explore somewhere else, get new parts of the map to, you know, obviously get another ability or thing uh metroid dread throws you new things like so thick and fast it it's insane how many power-ups you get by the end of the game where it's literally like you start off with you know your good little pew pew shots and eventually get a power shot which it eventually turns Mm -hmm. into something else and something else and they just come so thick and fast which it it could like i said it could be perceived negatively because it doesn't give you time to really appreciate something you've just picked up because it feels like mm-hmm. the next upgrade's around the corner but man it, it, i just reached a point where i was like how how much more stuff can they possibly give me i feel like i filled out my arsenal and let you me just you, have so many powers like overwhelmed yeah they they just continue to to throw them at you and it's not a not a bad thing at all in my opinion i mean and like some of them mm-hmm. are just modifiers to existing abilities like I mentioned you you've got your normal shot and then that shot gets modified into something else which lets you reach other areas um yeah but it just it just shows how well this game is designed because my goodness there's so many like different you know kinds of doors and obstacles but you always 
sort of like led the right way and, and you never feel i mean i suppose at the beginning of the game you might feel a bit lost because you're obviously taking in the, all the systems and that but it's unreal how these levels are designed um coherently that you know when you you get a new ability you pop out somewhere it's like oh like i've just appeared back here how did how did they do that and how it's almost happen? Yeah, yeah and not only that it's almost done in a way where you just you pop up in a new area and you walk forward it's like oh well this is where i need to go anyway <laughs> And like rinse and repeat that for, you know, all seven to 10 hours of the game. It's like, how did they design this? It's just unreal how everything just fits. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's cordoned off according. Like I'm sure speedrunners will find ways to break the game, but you, mm. an average gamer, you going to just play it like, damn, this thing just fits together. So on it's, yeah, it's really, really well designed. Like some of the best map design I've seen. Uh, in a long time so and do you feel like <clears throat> i know <coughs> i've heard the sentiment that maybe if you're not familiar with uh, metroid games you might find the map a bit like perplexing because like it expects you to shoot at like rocks to reveal yeah, like hidden so, areas and stuff so yeah did you the, ever get like really lost I, you know yeah I, mean? I had i had maybe one or two instances where i was like i don't know where to go but that being said, like I mentioned earlier, the game is designed in a way that it almost keeps you, it's weird because like a Metroidvania is meant to be about like exploring this big area and figuring out where to go. But this game is so good at like forcing you to stay in a specific area, if I could put mm -hmm. it like that, until you figure out how to get out of it. It's like, I'm in this pit, for example, and there's no way out except, oh, like I have to shoot this wall and then proceed, whatever. Like that's a dumb example. But when you play the game, you'll see for yourself that it's, you're very much restricted to a certain area. Um, you're not like running back to where you started in the game, for example, going, oh, maybe there's a hidden wall here. It's very much like, no, you're in the right place. You just need to figure out how to get through here. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, look, like I said, it, it takes some getting used to, but once you figure out the map system and you know, you, you'll pull it up, pretty regularly be like oh, i think i need to go there and that's usually where you need to go um so yeah so what did you think about the um i mean we ju ju if you're watching the footage now you're seeing the first encounter with an enemy, little enemy. which is uh these are enemies peppered throughout the game that are mm. for all intents and purposes indestructible at mm. the time that you meet them um and they patrol areas where you kind of have to like just get around them yeah um and they i'm gonna say they instant kill you if they find you because the the timing on the counter is both random it's, and extremely difficult, difficult to pull off, to pull off yeah. so, so yeah, yeah so I what do you think about those that, areas yeah i suppose that's a a good segue into the difficulty of the game where uh the emmys themselves like let, let's start there they are like you mentioned a if they if they grab you it's a one hit one kill unless you manage to I don't know, against all odds, like here, yeah, I actually got grabbed by mistake. <laughs> Did right. not expect that. But no, that's how quick death is. Um, but yeah, if you don't get the counter off, you are dead. And you have to, I mean, you don't, it's, you don't lose that much progression. You just start outside mm. the room. Um, but yeah, I think initially when you, when you first encounter them, they are a very scary presence <laughs> because you're figuring the game out and good Lord, there's this robot following you around and you don't know how to get around. Um, but I will say as the game goes on, like the image encounter, they obviously become more challenging. Like they they either have modifiers or different weapons at their disposal to make your life hell. Um, but it mm. becomes a great adrenaline rush. If you are seen, it's a thing of I need to escape fast. It doesn't matter where I'm going as long as I just put distance between me and this Terminator-esque robot that's just stalking <laughs> me. <laughs> it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> God, if this was on PC, that would be a lot. Just like 100%. different incarnations of Arnold Schwarzenegger just yeah. hunting you down. Um, but I, I think that they're, they're a pretty cool uh, addition to this game. It just it mixes up the you know the the whole thing of I'm just traversing an area, shooting random enemies, and mm -hmm. you know balancing that with okay, well now I have to be more stealthy. I have to obviously see where this enemy is. I need to you know, wait for it to walk past or alert it and just figure out how to get past it, you know, like loop around, mm -hmm. jump over it, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I, I quite liked it. I mean, by, by the end, I think you sort of, you know, like any typical horror game or thriller, you become used to the threats and it's not so much a threat anymore. Um, mm -hmm. but you figured like, them out. You figure of. them out. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, they, they do get tools later that make them 
you know, it keeps the challenge. Um, it keeps the threat very real. Like you can't just go, oh, it's another Emmy. I'm just gonna, you know, breeze mm. past it or whatever. Um, I but mean, I- in my in my limited time, I quite enjoyed the uh, the thrill of like you're in it because they they're confined to certain areas. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, they don't follow you and- throughout the whole map. Yeah, like I, I very quickly found like, okay, being stealthy is super not what the game expects of me. It wants me to just blitz through these areas and just mm. be evasive. So it's it almost becomes like a platforming puzzle. Like, mm. okay, he's moving there. How do I get around him? Yeah. Um, and those those moments, I feel like small little chase sequences and I, mm. I quite enjoy them. Yeah, yeah. I, also, I also really enjoy them. But I mean, that does, I suppose, link to the difficulty of the game where some people will play it and i think be immediately put off by the instant dead states because it is punishing yeah. like you 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 get grabbed you miss time your counter which we've said very difficult to pull off and you're dead and you start out of the room like so you lose like a minute of progression maybe two depending on how long you've been playing um but that aside even even the bosses themselves are are pretty damn challenging like i have to believe that if you're not accustomed to playing you know difficult games you will maybe be put off by like damn this is just it's just too hard but Mm -hmm. in the game's defense it's like any other challenging game where it's a thing of okay you just have to learn to read the enemy's patterns and i think with metroid specifically or at least this this specific game the patterns it's it's unreal how you started at a boss you go man like this boss is just kicking my butt until you figure out the pattern it's just like it becomes a cakewalk like oh it's actually not that uh, difficult. Yeah. I recognize all, like, it's different in a game, like, it's, you know, this compared to something, say, like a Dark Souls, where, you know, you learn to read the the boss's movements, but they be sometimes so unpredictable or just move too quickly that it's hard to react in time. Whereas I felt in Metroid Dread, it's very much like there's maybe three to four, maybe five different movesets, and they telegraphed pretty, like, straight like in a straightforward manner that like i said you eventually you beat a boss like oh that that was actually easy i could probably beat it the first time if i replay the game again you know mm-hmm. um so, so yeah. it's it's more like just learning yeah the pattern recognition exactly and just like yeah. figuring out what you yeah. need to do yeah but it, it's got that good old school vibe where i often think of games like say metal slug is, is one that comes to mind where it's just this boss you there's no health bar but you know, if you shoot them, they flash right and they're taking damage and you just chip away at this invisible number um, to bring it to zero. And I like that. It's just very retro to me. And Metroid Red's got that. The, the bosses do have like big health bars. But when you overcome them, it's that good rush of, yeah, <laughs> I did it. Mm-hmm. And it's usually followed by like, hey, here's another ability. It's like, how many abilities can this game give me? Like, goodness, just too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and I think when you get around to it, you definitely will as well. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it. Mm. Um, it, it seems like my sort of game. You know, I, I've enjoyed lots of Metroidvanias in the past, like you know, Hollow Knight, and mm. uh, most, most recently, um, Symphony of the Night, mm. um, which is where like castlevania and you know where where, yeah. where metroidvania really like combined into a thing you know because castlevania kind of did its did its own version yeah. of the metroid exactly metroid formula so yeah um yeah. but you, you, you'll see it i mean so like in those are two good examples hollow knight and symphony of the knights just look at this lenska did bring me a coffee what a good wife <laughs> <laughs> she's just waiting yeah because alessandra got a got a red bull and i was saying lenska's not here with my coffee <laughs> We are so spoiled. <laughs> yeah, we are coffee. spoiled. Thank you. <laughs> um, but so Hollow Knight and Symphony of the Knights are good examples of like you'll get a new ability and it's not necessarily immediately obvious where you should go. It's a thing mm-hmm. of like, oh, I can dash now. Let me go poke around the map till I figure out mm. where to go. Like, honestly, Metroid doesn't have that problem. It, it really feels like the way the map is designed, you always end up exactly where you need to be. I mean, unless you veer off the beaten path and you, you know, you go explore and do other things, you know, you get an ability, you want to go poke around in that one room you knew you couldn't get to before. But if you just play in like an almost linear manner, it's, it's unreal how things come together and like everything's just locked off 
in a way mm-hmm. that yeah I, I, you'll see when you play it you'll be like wow <laughs> how did they pull this do, together like i just can't i do really like the one feature of the map where <clears throat> when you get a new ability it will highlight well you can you can basically filter all exactly. the uh, or highlight all the areas where that ability now yes. applies yeah. so you can see exactly on the map like oh cool these are all the areas i can mm. immediately go and test and that you know maybe people say that takes away from the exploration but that certainly reduces the amount of frustration um in my view like to have that at a glance is really cool. yeah um and time. i appreciate that sort of design it, it's like very respectful of your time too because yeah. in in symphony of the night there was nothing like that and it was mm. <laughs> symphony of the night was interesting because there were moments where i was looking at the map and squinting and looking for little like pathways yeah, that where, maybe had been colored this? in yeah yeah and uh you know i backtracked a lot in that castle and i appreciated it because like i found things while i was backtracking but mm. also there were moments of like, where do I go? I just yeah, want like to fucking, like, progress. Like, exactly. Please. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's where you see the modern versus the old exactly. in terms of design elements. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Metroid Dread, um, if you've got a Switch, but highly recommend it. It is, and it like, it's a beautiful title. Runs so smoothly. It is, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just... Makes me a- miss the OLED. <laughs> rip my baby it looks so good in the oled yeah. my god it um, really really does but yeah, d- yeah definitely don't don't miss it if you do have a switch like it's it's one of it's it's frustrating because it's one of those things where i i know it's a good game i know it's reviewed very well but when mm. it comes to game of the year conversations i'm like i just don't know if it has the clout to you know stand mm-hmm. up with and like maybe it's unfair of me to say that maybe it will but it feels mm-hmm. like this is a game that many people sleep on, and it's unfair because mm. it's it's really, really just so. I mean, good. <laughs> that's just been the problem with Metroid <clears throat> all over. Like mm. uh, I was listening to another podcast, and one of the comments that really surprised me was that Metroid has never been big in Japan, which I never what? knew or I never assumed. Yeah, and that's partly why Nintendo just doesn't focus on it, is because like it is not a big franchise in Japan, and. Metroid Red has sold better in Japan, but it's still not like setting the world on fire. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that could explain why it, there's so many gaps between releases mm. because, like, it is a very Western focused title um, yeah. only. And even then, it's still got its niche appeal. You know, like, mm. we rave and rave about Hollow Knight, but I also don't think Hollow Knight's like sold like fucking millions. You know mm. what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that is a uh, Metroid Dread. Mm-hmm. Good time. Would recommend. 